Welcome in to Warchant.com and Warchant TV. Before we get started, you can see my man Irish Chappelle right there, Tom Lang right there. Here I am up in the corner, and you're you watching us, and we really do appreciate that. Don't forget to like and subscribe so you get more of these preview videos and really any of the content that we produce on a daily basis here on Warchant.com. There's a lot going on right now. You're not going to want to miss it. Like and subscribe so that you don't, as we're getting all geared up for the start of spring football practice. And this would be uh, the preview, uh, the secondary, if you will. Uh, it's a loaded group. I mean, we may be here a while. Um, this is, uh, they got a lot of guys in the secondary, a lot of options. And actually, I would, I think I'll start with you, Ira. I think that's what I'm most excited about as we start to look at these individual players is that as you do, whether it's safeties, defensive backs, slot corners, however you're looking at it, you really realize that Florida State has a lot of options here. It's part of the poll question that we're going to ask out there, and we'll show you the results from. Basically, uh, what is it you're most excited about, Ira, with this secondary group? Yeah, it might be too many options, to be honest with you. I mean, they just have so many different guys. It's hard to imagine this entire group going through this spring and all coming back in the fall. I mean, I, and I really think to some degree, you know, what we saw at the end of last season was a, a starting five in that secondary that I think we all liked in the way they played for the most part. Uh, and it's good to have competition and you want to have competition. And there's some guys who are former starters and some, some other guys who are younger guys who have started to make an impact uh, to start making an impression. Uh, but after that second wave of three or four guys who are going to factor into that rotation, you know, I don't, are, are, are some of these other guys going to stay around next season to be third on the depth chart? And I, I really think there could be guys who are third on the depth chart this season who might have been key players just a year or two years ago. So I, I think this is going to be a fascinating to spring, almost like a, a battle of the fittest to see who uh, comes out of this in that too deep. Well, that's what you want too, right? You'd prefer to have something like that, akin to that at every position group. Very few teams around the country actually do have that because of the competition it creates. To your point, Ira, double-digit guys in this secondary who have started a college football game. More, more than 10 guys on this on that secondary alone that have started a college football game. That's a lot of experience coming back. It's a lot of competition. I think to answer the question you just posed, I would say that I'm guaranteeing you there are a few guys after this spring that are going to take it on down the road. I, I don't know how, um, you know, that wouldn't happen at this point. Uh, Tom, for you, what is what is the uh, factor that you're most excited about before we start dropping names as guys that we think will have a huge impact and really kind of do an overview of this secondary? Yeah, I thought if there was any, you know, weakness by the end of the season, because it, there was a, it was a mess in September last year, as most things were for the defense, not named the front four. But by the end of it, the only weakness I saw in the secondary was that the outside corner play could sometimes get exposed. And the thing to me that's a really good thing looking forward for Florida State is that Amarian Cooper has emerged by the end of the season as an option. He wasn't always starting out there, but looks like he could get some serious reps and looks in spring. Kevin Knowles. Does Kevin Knowles shift from slot corner to the outside as well? And then you've also got another transfer to Greedy Vance, obviously, coming in. And, and he's somebody we saw at the tour of duty workouts. He's not the tallest player. Uh, but he certainly looks sturdy and he looks like he's power five capable just from a body type standpoint. And you've got young players like Azaria Thomas and Sam McCall to also enter into the mix. We'll see exactly what position they play, but it looks like that they've got options across the board, not just at safety, not just at slot corner. And then you have to live with some things on the outside. I think outside the numbers, they look like they've got potential. And certainly there's a mix and match for what you do with your nickel sets and your dime sets. But uh, like you guys have said to echo it. It looks like they finally have depth across the board in the defensive backfield. Yeah, options are always a good thing. Let's lead the way with, I think, the key to the turnaround last year, and we'll start with a safety in Jamie Robinson. Uh, Ira, I'll start with you. I'm selecting him as my guy. I think everybody would. He was so productive last year. Another transfer portal guy in which they got it right, South Carolina, 85 tackles, four interceptions. He simply put um, pretty much the rock of this secondary. I think he's, he, he's, he's bordering on being classified as, as sort of a stud. I think he's a really good football player. Yeah, and he really changed the complexion of the defense. When when they realized that Kevin Knowles could play nickelback and they could move Jamie Robinson back to safety, that really solidified the back end, which was huge because they were struggling uh, mightily early in the season. But the good news is they think he can be a lot better, and that's part of the reason Jamie Robinson came back this season. He was, from everything I've been told, he was really close to, to looking to leave after last season to go to the NFL, but the you know returns from the NFL under – advisory committee was not as high as he was hoping. And they think he's a guy that has much more uh, 
underneath his ceiling to get to. So uh, I think you could see him play with a, a more passion. Uh, I think there were a couple times last season where people were mad the Jacksonville State game. Did he give all effort on that last play? And there were a couple of situations like that where maybe um, he let frustration get the best of him. Uh, I think you're going to see a much more focused and determined. This is his ultimate money year. And uh, I think what he gave them last year was huge, but I think there's more for him to give. We move on from there. Tom, I'll pivot to you because I want to go ahead and continue to look at these returning starters and the guys that have played an awful lot as we begin the discussion. Uh, Jarvis Brownlee or Jerry and Jones, pick you who you want to talk about. Both those guys have uh, started a lot of games, appeared in a lot of games. Um, I think both can be really good football players. I just love the way that Jarvis Brownlee plays the game. He's very physical. He plays with great passion. He's going to get beat sometimes because he's not the most athletic corner. He's not the fastest corner. So he has some things that are working against him, but he's a real good football player. Either way, these are two guys that have a lot of experience, and I think if they take a step forward, we're talking about, again, a team that has a lot of starting experience and a lot of talent and a lot of depth. Yeah, once again, you know, you hope, the goal is that there's development in spring and fall camp, that this isn't the best that you saw out of Jarvis Brownlee and Jerry on Jones last year. They were serviceable, and the great thing about this defense, the defensive backcourt, is certainly by the end of the season. Actually, we saw it a little bit in the spring game last year. They get downhill and they tackle. They do want to play physically. And, you know, so if there are some limitations behind them, they might let some guys get behind them. They do get downhill, they shed, and they help tackle. That's what both of those guys do. Jarvis Brownlee, I think... Uh, is more of a plug-and-play type as the floor raises, the talent floor raises in the defensive back room. Jerrion Jones needs to do a little bit more work in that regard, but they're both very physical players. And if you look at it, I mean, Ira talked about it before with Jamie Robinson. Akeem Dent, by the end of the year last year, was playing much more physically, and clearly there was a role that was carved out he was comfortable with as well. You've got a lot of players that are now not just capable from a size standpoint and a range standpoint of getting from A to B and defending what they need to defend, but they also have an identity about them. And I think that's where those two starters from last year can begin the conversation. The question is, how much can you advance the conversation from where we are from November of last year through this spring's camp and then into the fall? Ira, a dynamic player that has a lot of experience, but we're all frustrated by is Travis J. I'm talking about another returning starter. At one point, he was a starter. He's a guy who saw his snaps diminish as the year went on. And uh, really, he's an enigma. It's tough to figure out why they aren't able to get more out of that guy because all three of us and really anybody on this beat that covers the team at all would look at him and say, you got to find a way to play that guy. He's got to do more for your team because he's one of the most athletic players on the team. Yeah, and it's not like he was just lost. I mean, there were a lot of plays last season where he was in position and just didn't make the play. And and, and that, to me, that has been the most surprising thing because he's got unlimited athletic ability. It's not like he can't out jump some of the receivers or tight ends that he's failed against, uh, it's there. It just hasn't come out. So they have to figure out a way to, to unleash that. Um, it would be huge for this defense if he became a productive player. Um, but I think there's a lot of guys that are kind of in that mode right now of it's either it's now or never. A Jarian Jones, who Tom was talking about last, uh, last just before, a cornerback is another guy that had a lot of opportunities, had some good moments, had some bad moments late in the year. Omari and Cooper was taking his reps. Omari and Cooper was the guy out there uh, at that cornerback spot. And, uh, and that's, that's, it's going to be interesting to see if some of those older guys can bounce back and respond now because Travis J is a guy, as you said, who has started in the past. Can he reclaim a job? Uh, Sidney Williams is a guy who started in the past, got hurt, uh, and then the secondary got better when he wasn't out there. Can he come back and claim a job? And then you have all these young guys, Demore Tate was one of the top recruits in the country two years ago. We have not seen him really on the field on a Saturday yet. He had some academic issues early on. Can he make an impact? And then you have these young guys, Sam McCall, Azaria Thomas. So there are a lot of – and a greedy Vance who transferred him from Louisville who started a cornerback at Louisville. So, I mean, it's just uh, – it's going to be like a battle royal. I just envision this, like, you know, Mike Norvell is in the center of the ring and calls all the DBs in and lets to see who's left standing at the end of the uh, spring. Hey, Ira, stay right there and continue because I want you to go ahead and express what you saw from Renardo Green. I know you asked about it in the uh, follow-up with Coach Storms. Renardo Green's another guy that we're kind of not talking about just yet, but I know you're excited about him as well. Well, I, I really wasn't a year ago, you know, and he's a guy <laughs> that is is a previous starter, another one of those guys that's a previous starter. Uh, last year, I think he got banged up a little bit and just – you know, just watching body language, watching him in practice, it seemed like he was kind of disconnecting a little bit, uh, wasn't right in there. 
And he was one of those guys you had your eye on after last season. Is he going to come back or is he going to look to move yeah. on? And then we go out there for, uh, for the um, uh, tour of duty and he had a black jersey on, which means he's one of the top performers uh, in, in the tour of duty. So I think that's a great sign for them. He's got ability. There's no doubt he's got the ability and he can help this defense if he's you know, totally bought in and, and believes in what they're doing. And that may be what it has to be because as we're talking about this competition, it's not always about who's the best corner or who's the best slot corner or who's the best safety. It's about finding the best five or six guys in that secondary to play together. And so you may see guys switch roles. I mean, as Tom mentioned earlier, you know, does Kevin Knowles go outside or does Jarvis Brownlee maybe move inside? I mean, he's a physical guy. So we have to figure out they, that's going to be the job of this coaching staff. But the 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 really what we're going to see what this coaching staff can do because they have ingredients now. Now we have to see them put them together in the best way possible. Tom, you know what's interesting to me? Uh, I think you mentioned a moment ago, or, or Ira did, uh, Sidney Williams is a really physical player. They've got a couple guys. Shaheen Brown is not somebody we're talking about right we now. We haven't it's, even mentioned him. Yeah, he may, yeah. Be, he may be the most talented. He literally may be the most talented guy in that group or in the top two or three. Yeah, and Shaheen Brown is a big kid. He's six foot two or thereabouts. He's long, but he's also, I mean, he looks like the kind of kid that if he keeps getting bigger, you could move to linebacker like they did with Brendan Gant. You know, they moved him out of the secondary to linebacker. And there may be a variety of reasons for that. But the point is a bigger, stronger tackler. Again, we're talking about these options with guys who play very different roles. You know, maybe on obvious rundowns, you get the bigger guys in there uh, and, and 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 give them a shot at coming downhill and, and, and tackling. We haven't brought up uh, Jarquez McClellan. We haven't brought up Hunter Washington, Ira, Tom. Uh, anything you want to weigh in with those guys? Because I know uh, with McClellan, they're excited. Yeah, what I'd say is, um, you know, the young kids won't get this reference, but it's kind of an Art Vandalay situation, the importer-exporter. Florida State, I think, is going to be an exporter of talent, yeah. either after spring camp or after next fall for some of these younger guys. It's just there are so many options. There's not enough places on the field to put these guys, even if you want to run a 4-2-5 or whatever it is with two linebackers out there and you're going to get more defensive backs in your base. There's just not enough spots for it. So, what we're talking about right now and the way we're talking about it is how Florida State should be discussing position previews in spring camp and fall camp. This is one segment group that finally, and Jeff, you know it from the show that we do, 1 o'clock right here on War Chant TV on weekdays, that I'm not falling for it anymore. It's something I've said for the last couple of years with the defensive back group. I'm tired of hearing how good they are in camp, and then you see week to week that there are failures. I think this is finally the time. Uh, maybe I'll be fooled again, but I think this is finally the time that you've got more answers than questions. And then maybe you see a player or two from this camp playing somewhere else in Power 5 football and doing some positive things for another program. I think it's because we have some sure things. Akeem Dent Jr. bouncing back and having the kind of year that he did late in the year, I think you know that's a sure thing. Jamie Robinson is a sure thing. When you have some guys that you know that you can trust are going to go out and play at a high level and know what they're doing, and then you kind of sprinkle in these other players and allow them to gain some experience or put them in good situations, then they're allowed to grow a little bit more. You're not It's not an emergency just throwing guys out there. At times it was last year, but once they settled in, now that competition – to get reps, to get playing time behind those guys gets ratcheted up. They're pushing the starters. So I think what we're describing here as we just littered this uh, video with name after name after name, and I, I could just picture our uh, subscribers and viewers going, oh, yeah, I forgot about that guy. Oh, yeah, that guy too. Oh, he played pretty well at the end of last year. There's so many guys that did. Uh, I don't know what we can expect from true freshmen, but last year we got – production from freshmen and that's why we're excited so when you go back to sam mccall zaria thomas uh you mentioned greedy vance transferring in i don't know what i really expect from him i didn't think he was a great um get necessarily especially with all the defensive backs that they have just my opinion but i'm really excited to watch uh mccall and thomas i mean that all that length and size and speed with uh, mccall i mean he was one of the top recruits in the country so it seems to be, I dare say, an abundance of riches if they just know what to do. And this is where the coaching staff is under a lot of pressure, Ira, because there's really no excuse. I think almost anybody would admit that they have enough athleticism, speed, and depth in the secondary to be able to produce something pretty consistent and pretty good. And if they don't, that to me will be on coaching. Whereas other aspects of this team, there are times you look out there and you say they're just not good enough. I can't say that about this group. Yeah, and that, and that group particularly last year had some issues um, in terms of the, the buy-in. And, and there were some issues during the course of that season where, you know, some people around the program were starting to look at, you know, Coach Woodson, who's done a great job since he's been here, especially as a recruiter, 
but like these guys have to, they have to be dependable and accountable. And, and I think you started to see that late last season. That has to continue. You can't have any missteps in that regard. The one thing that I'm really excited about this group that we haven't really touched on is you're starting to see some guys with ball skills, ball skills get on the field. And that's, you know, when, 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 you know, the last few years, Florida State's secondary, and people would say, oh, we need to play more zone, or we need to play more man, or we need to – and it's like, man, you just don't have guys that make plays on the football. It doesn't matter if they're in man or zone. They don't make plays on the football. Amari Cooper makes plays on the football. Kevin Knowles will. Um, I think, you know, Shaheen Brown, the reason we were so excited about him in practice is because he certainly will. He just needs to understand everything he's doing. But you've got some guys now in that secondary who can make plays on the ball. Jamie Robinson's another one that I think that's – if you can create turnovers – I mean, that's just – it takes you to a, such a different level. So I'm really excited. I know Tom's still a little bit wait and see with the secondary, but I'm really <laughs> excited about this group. I'm excited about this group too. Uh, Tom's just burnt by the past. We've both bought in. We both jumped into the deep end several times, and it just didn't pan out for us. So were they. They were burnt too. It was, <laughs> it was because they were burnt that I became burnt out. That's all we I'm saying. All, we were all yeah. burnt. Yeah. Hey, let's look at the poll question. Uh, Matthew will pull it up for us here and, and – we'll, Poll, poll question. Let's see what the uh, viewers and, and, and subscribers thought. Uh, what has you most excited about the defensive backfield in 2022? Overwhelmingly, uh, with 61% of the votes, uh, finally legitimate options across the board. I think that's going to be the choice of a, a lot of people watching this because we just got done talking about the options. I know, Tom, you and I were talking off the air, and I, I'll give you a chance to weigh in on this. Uh, for you, it was Amari and Cooper and uh, Kevin Knowles uh, emerging last year as legitimate outside guys or legitimate corners. Yeah, it was. Uh, just because, again, we saw what Amari and Cooper could do in, in exchange for taking Jerry on Jones off the field. And you can always respond and take your job back if you're number seven for Florida State. Uh, but the problem is, I think this is probably the fault of uh, the question asker. My wife, who's a data analyst, is not going to like this. But that, that fourth option is the mo most correct one because it kind of encapsulates the other three. It's like, you know, everywhere you look on the field, you think you have an answer. It's just for me, specifically speaking, if you have Amari and Cooper and Kevin Knowles and Brownlee, as your three options outside the numbers, you could do so much with the middle of the football field. I think you've got enough there. And then you have plus players, I believe, on the outside. They'll have to prove it in spring, but that's why I would choose probably option A. But I can see why most people chose the fourth option because we we just gone through 15 minutes of it. There are a lot of names with a lot of talent. Ira, any final thoughts that you have? I, I will say this, and I'll end with you, and we'll sign off. I, I just, to me, that this is this is a show and prove year. Um, a lot of coaches on the defensive side of the ball that we're looking at saying, "Come on, you've got talent there. You're deep on the interior of the defensive line. You may have to prove a little something on the edges, but you're deep in the secondary. You've got some help at linebacker. This has to be um, a strength of Florida State next year. This defense has to be a pretty good unit. They were pretty good in the second half of last season. There's no doubt about that. And they had some guys emerge like the ACC Defensive Player of the Year. But I think they've got all three levels now, enough talent to field a very good ACC defense. Yeah, and, and I think just touching on, and this is the last of our position preview, spring practice start on Saturday, but we touched on it in the defensive end and in the linebacker uh, previews as well, that there's going to be a lot more asked of this secondary this year. And, and the, good, the good news is they've got a lot more players, they've got a lot of experience, they've got a lot of talent. A lot's going to be asked of them because they're going to have to bring pressure. Some of these secondary guys are going to have to be going after the quarterback. Some of the linebackers are going to have to be going after the quarterback. They're going to have to create pressure because they won't be able to always get it from the front four. So this is uh, there's going to be a lot asked of this secondary. So these guys, even though they're coming back, they can't feel comfortable because they're going to be put in a lot more high leverage situations because this defense is going to need them to produce at that level. Yeah, they don't have to be an elite defense just yet, but they have to be a good defense in this conference and give themselves a fighting chance week in and week out. They should have the tools to do that. All right, we're going to wrap it up for our position previews here on Warchant TV and Warchant.com. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Don't forget to come back and check in on us daily because we're going to have more and more in the coming days as spring practice gets started. Uh, I know that uh, we have a chance to sit down at the luncheon tomorrow. Really looking forward to that as well, to talk with coaches. It's always fun, and we get to kick it all off. So. You'll want to return to Warchant.com and Warchant TV. For Irish Chappelle and Tom Lang, our thanks to Matthew for producing, and our thanks to all of you. We'll talk to you again real soon. Be well, everybody.